we've learned from some of our sources, and it's been talked about a lot in a lot of other outlets, about part of the deal, including uh, the deal that's still being uh, worked on, including these numbers, you know, that, that, that the border could be shut down specifically if migrant crossings increase above 5,000 per day. Were those numbers acceptable to the White House? Were they the numbers of the White House or the president was pushing for? I'm not going to get into specifics or details. I just don't want to get. But from a messaging perspective, House Republicans are diving into these numbers. They're responding to them and they're yeah. calling them out and saying this is the reason they can't support this kind of bill. So are you guys doing yourself a disservice by right. not talking about some of these specifics? I'm going to be very clear here. House Republicans are actually getting in the way. They're not part of the discussion. They're not. They're not part of uh, trying to figure out how to come to, to a bipartisan agreement. We would like them to be, but they're deciding not to. The House Republicans are, you know, they're flip-flopping on this. They're re truly flip-flopping on this issue. Yeah. Um, a judge in Delaware yesterday ruled that Elon Musk's pay package in Tesla was excessive. Um, Elon then tweeted uh, that companies shouldn't incorporate in the president's home state. So I'm wondering if you had any reaction to the ruling, but barring that, um, Thoughts on Delaware's corporate governance and legal system that you might want to share? So I'm going to be really careful. I'm not going to get into a private company's uh, legal cases. Uh, look, uh, this ruling, uh, and I'll just add a finer point, this ruling has doesn't involve this administration at all. It just doesn't. Uh, so I, I really don't have anything more to, to share from here. There have been um, notable exchanges on Capitol Hill today with uh, some of the tech company executives uh, being questioned about their content and about uh, protection for users and so forth. Do you know if the president has had a chance to see any of that? Does the White House have a view about um, <coughs> how forthcoming these uh, CEOs have been and if there's more they need to do? So just a couple of things on that. Obviously, we've been monitoring uh, the hearing. Uh, the country is experiencing an unprecedented uh, youth mental health crisis. That's a fact. That's what we see in the data. And there is now undeniable evidence, as I just stated, that social media and other online platforms have contributed to that. And the decision by the U.S. and other countries to pull uh, UNRWA funding uh, will make the problem uh, even worse uh, because of UNRWA's unique capabilities uh, in Gaza. Does the White House share these concerns, and uh, what's the administration prepared to do to fill any gap in aid to Gaza uh, caused by uh, the decision to defund well, We absolutely share that. So absolutely we're concerned about that, no question about it. I would remind that, uh, that it is a suspension, it is not a termination. We'll take a look at what our options are, depending on how the investigation goes. And the money that was suspended, uh, there wasn't a lot left in the allocation, and the money that was uh, suspended was really designed more for their efforts in Jordan, not in Gaza. It has been three days. The president said yesterday that he had decided how to respond, but we haven't seen any public action. Well, you know, we, at least publicly, we haven't seen any action. So with every day that passes and no response, are you missing an opportunity to signal resolve? I think we signal resolve pretty well. And as I said uh, the other day, we'll respond uh, on our own time on our own schedule. 